to Ricca University. I'm Shanika Marie. And I'm Christina, and we are a technical chemist here at Ricca. So, in tech services, we get a lot of questions concerning our standards, reagents, appropriate assays in order to execute both precision and accuracy. Today we're going to do a titration with strong basis with sterilized sulfuric acid solution. We're going to use 20% weight volume sodium hydroxide, one normal sulfuric acid, and phenolphthalene 0.5% in alcohol as our indicator. Here are the materials required. Griffin beakers, Erlenmeyer flasks, volumetric pipettes, calibrated thermometer, wax pen, DI water, bulb, and of course, eyewear and gloves for protection. Step one, safety first. If you have long hair, tie it back. Next, put on goggles and gloves. Okay, so let's get started with the test. Our sample today is a 20% sodium hydroxide weight volume. Because percent solutions are not typically used as titrants, but rather as reagents to either adjust pH or to move interferences, we can actually use a secondary standard, meaning a titrant whose concentration is traceable to a primary standard. In this case, our sulfuric acid is traceable to tris hydroxymethyl aminomethane by NIST. With manual titrations, it's best to use a 50 milliliter class A burette. Try to get as closest to a 40 milliliter endpoint as possible. That will allow you to use about 80% of your burette, resulting in increased accuracy. Start by triple rinsing your burette. That will allow you to remove any possible contaminants. You want to rinse with DI water. You can also follow up with a rinse using your standard. I'll go ahead and fill our burette with the standard. And remember that's a one normal sulfuric acid. You also want to make sure that you don't have any bubbles in your burette. So we like to use a little technique where we do some shaking until we get a pretty good bubbleless, I like to call stream. So of course we've lost some volume. I will go ahead and fill that again. Next step and one of the most important, you want to zero that be red. And in zeroing, that meniscus needs to be rested directly on the zero graduated line. I like to achieve that by doing really quick flicks and you may not be able to see this, but this is perfect, perfectly at zero. Let's go ahead and move these out the way. All right, so for our sample, first things first, you need to make sure that the temperature is either at 20 degrees based on NIST traceability or you'll do temperature corrections. Calibrated thermometer. Everything is calibrated, everything is traceable. Go ahead and take that temperature and we are at 20 degrees. Let's pipette our sample now. So volumetric pipette. And one of the things that's most important when pipetting is to make sure that the meniscus, just like on the burette, is at that graduated line. You're going to slightly lift and put pressure on the pipette until the meniscus, you can do a little tapping, is directly at the graduate line. This is the technique we like to use, the pipette perpendicular in the flask, and that way we're going to make sure we dispense everything. We will add our indicator now. We like to do about between five and 10 drops of phenolphthalein, and that's really just based on the concentration of your base. In this case, because we're at 20%, I'll do around five drops. So, one, two, three, four, five. 
And then we can rinse the sides of our flask with some DI water to make sure our sample is all in the bottom of our flask, not too much. Now let's begin our titration. So whenever you know where your desired endpoint is, you can drain pretty confidently until you get close enough to where you need to slow down. Technique is always important. So go ahead and give it a swirl. That way you'll know that what you're seeing is well mixed and that it's correct. As I near my endpoint or my expected endpoint, I'm going to slow down because we do not want to over titrate. And you can slow down by opening and closing the stopcock. Okay, so because we're getting really close to our endpoint, as I said before, it's really important to slow down. We can also do a little rinsing of our sides too. Oops. There we go. Okay. Best technique is tiny flicks. Make sure to do one at a time. Reason being, well that was two, is to make sure that we do not over titrate. This is how you're very sure of the value that you get. A little more rinsing. Okay. I want the end point to be sharp. And see, we're getting a little lighter. That's why you don't want to go too quick. You want that end point to be sharp and right on the money. Perfect. So we'll take our reading and Okay guys. So once we're done with our titration, it's time to check your math. We start by using the endpoint or the amount of sulfuric acid in our burette. In our case, 45 milliliters. Multiply that times the normality of the sulfuric acid when normal. The 3.9997 UC is a derivative of the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. 39.997 divided by 1000 in order to convert that to milliliters multiplied by 100 in order to convert that to a percent. We are working with a percent solution. All of this is divided by the sample size, in our case, nine milliliters. Once you plug all those values in, your concentration is 20.00% weight volume sodium hydroxide. Once again, I'm Shanika Marie. And I'm Christina. And thank you for joining us at Rika University.